Western Weather Service in Raleigh. It's Nick Petro with your Hurricane Helene briefing here on this 11.30 a.m. Thursday, September 26, 2024. So um, let's just jump right into it and I'll probably be bouncing uh, through different screens. So if you, um, if you notice uh, that um, what you see doesn't match with what I'm saying, feel free to uh, jump in there and, and let me know on the question box. And you should see now a map of rainfall amounts. Uh, this is actually what has happened, what has already fallen in the past 48 hours, basically the two days. So it, leading up to this event, it's been very wet. And, and uh, you know, we've, we've kind of made that clear the last couple of days that, you know, stream flows are running really high. It's just been, just been really wet. So, um, but just some of the numbers out in the mountains are super impressive. You know, there's a, a amounts exceeding 10 inches of rain. Um, now, granted, that's up in the highest terrain, but but still, even by Asheville, I mean, there's there's rainfall amounts that exceed seven inches, and um, you know, it's it's clearly there's going to be you know, as the word I'm I'm hearing, catastrophic uh, devastation out in the uh, mountains, uh, and clearly landslides and, and 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 that sort of thing. River flooding is is going to be a, a big news story here in the coming days. But as you look uh, more towards the uh, northern coastal plain and northern Piedmont up near the Virginia border, there's a couple swaths of heavier rain, and even around the Triangle region, uh, some heavier rain pockets of heavier rain. So, um, so clearly we are we are primed. I think I showed this to. Um, I think I showed this to. I'm going to jump screens again. So uh, bear with me here. Um, this is the latest stream flow information from the USGS, which shows that streams are already running high from previous rain events. Um, so, you know, I, I think it's important to keep in mind that uh, it will take less than usual rainfall amounts today and tomorrow to result in additional flash flooding. You know, when you see, you know, those blues and, and black circles, that's that's really above normal stream flow. So. You know, I'm already hearing reports of, of streams that are flooding in the Triangle region. So, uh, and we haven't even gotten to the main event yet. So, um, so anyway, um, that's important to bear in mind as well. So uh, let me just, I'm sorry about all the jumping back and forth, but uh, I got several windows here of data I'm trying to show. Uh, here is, uh, this is live data, both satellite, we're looking at the satellite imagery and radar imagery. And you can see, and I'll get my highlighter here, the center of uh, of Helene is still southwest of of Tampa, you know. But but by tomorrow morning, it's going to be you know it's going to make cover a lot of ground in 24 hours, right? But the thing I really want to draw your attention to is look at this look at this train of of moisture, and it's basically been moving north, right? That 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 is what has been setting the stage. Let me turn off satellite and look at that plume of moisture just moving north. And that's what's been setting the stage for how wet it's been in the western third of the state and the, the flash flooding that's expected, the landslides, and, and, and look how much more there is yet to go. There's all this rain in this circle that I draw, that I just drew here, is going to be uh, basically lifting north and being squeezed out as it gets pushed up the mountains. Uh, there's some rain here we're tracking that's uh, across central uh, South Carolina and Eastern South Carolina, that will get up into our area here later today. So, uh, so you know, we're going to have off and on rain uh, across, you know, across the state and the, across Central North Carolina here uh, as we head through, uh, really, through through tomorrow, through tomorrow afternoon. So, but when is the main event going to uh, to get here? Well, for that, I'm going to turn off radar and I'm going to turn on model simulations. And, and you know, I like to uh, show model simulations to give you a sense more of timing. Um, I wouldn't take the what you see here explicitly or or say, well, there's an orange thing moving over me. So that means, you know, right over me at a certain time, it's gonna be really bad. It, this is just to give a sense of, you know, where the worst of the weather may occur and what time, uh, you know, it's a model. So it will change, I guarantee you, it'll change. Um, but But it's just to show you overall trends. And uh, as I, I, I know there's no timestamp on here, so I'll guide you through the timestamps. I'm gonna just forward to roughly to about right now. That's about right now. And it's doing pretty good with uh, what's happening out there. You can see the center of um, Helene there, southwest of Tampa. Uh, as I run through this, this is noon today, 1 p.m., 2 p.m., 3 p.m., 4 p.m., 5 p.m. I'll stop here at 5 p.m. and you can see 
a uh, little band of showers, maybe a thunderstorm in there moving across the Triangle region, I-95 corridor, uh, I-40 corridor, um, but still the heaviest rain still to our south and across the western part of the state. That's 5 p.m. And then uh, 6 p.m., 7 p.m., 8 p.m., 9 p.m., uh, 10 p.m. I'm going to stop here. And you can see, you know, all in all, the really for central North Carolina, the impacts aren't you know, that bad. I mean, we're talking off and on rain, but nothing really uh, of, of major impact or hazard. Uh, now, if we were across the western third of the state, yeah, that's that's flooding rains. Um, but you also notice basically between now and, um, you know, 10 p.m., um, Helene, at least the center, is really going to start moving very quickly. Look how much ground that covered, or water, I should say, um, in, in just a, a, you know, uh, six to nine hour period of time. So it's really going to be picking up forward speed here pretty quick. And, um, and as we go forward in time, that's 10 p.m., 11, uh, 11 p.m. tonight, midnight tonight, um, 1 a.m. overnight tomorrow. Oh, by the way, before, I'll stop here at 1 a.m. Let me back up to like 8 p.m. I'm going to back up. There. I've been getting a lot of questions about, well, what about tonight's what about tonight's uh, weather, you know, this evening? I, I know there's a lot of outdoor activities uh, perhaps that would have normally happened uh, on Friday moved to this evening. And, and I will point out that, you know, that there's there's going to be some rain and there's going to be little isolated thunderstorms perhaps uh, moving across. So, you know, so, so, so like any, you know, I hate to compare it to like a summer day, you know, where you have scattered showers and thunderstorms, but but that's pretty much the, the, the character. You're, it, it'll be off and on light rain at times and just watch out for a, you know, stray lightning here or there, right? But in terms of really bad weather, that is not until tomorrow morning, okay? So generally speaking, this evening shouldn't be that bad, um, but more like, you know, um, nothing like tomorrow morning, okay? And I'll get here, to, I'll get to tomorrow morning in just a minute. So uh, so anyway, that's midnight right there, 1 a.m., 2 a.m., 3 a.m., 4 a.m., 5 a.m. And look by 5 a.m., you start to see a pretty potent, uh, or becoming more potent bands. There, here's a band of showers and storms. Here's another band of showers and storms. Here's basically the center bands of of Helene. And the bottom line is, is um, this is where you know basically this area right here is the real meat of the storm. The, you know the worst of it with the highest winds and the greatest tornado threat. Okay, so we're going to be following those bands as they advance forward. So uh, let me just go ahead and zoom closer in on Central North Carolina as I, as I take you through this. And uh, this is, uh, what time did I say this was? 5 a.m. Uh, this is 6 a.m., 7 a.m. So I'll stop it here at 7 a.m. and notice these bands here of heavier rain. Now, now clearly, you know, the, the western third of the state's still going to be getting crushed with heavy rain, but these little pockets of rain could easily put down an inch, maybe up to two inches. You know, if, if they're repetitive over the same area, maybe, you know, maybe two and a half inches in a very short period of time. So that's why we're concerned about flash flooding and the fact that, you know, it's not so much the amount, but it's how much comes down in a short period of time. So the weather will be going downhill very, very quickly uh, around rush hour tomorrow morning, you know, the commute, the morning commute. Um, and okay, so back to the, the to advancing this, this is 7 a.m., 8 a.m., 9 a.m. Now, really what's starting to get my, my uh, concern really increased is by 9 a.m., look how consolidated um, this band of rain becomes. Not only do you have, he will you have heavy downpours and localized flash flooding possible with these, but there's also, uh, let me turn on the wind. This is, uh, this is not wind gust. This is, um, whoops, I apologize. Let me let me fix that. Let me get back to the time we were looking at. Uh, bear with me here for just a second. All right, so where were we? We were right there. So, so that's what the radar may look like. This is wind, and you could see these bands will have some higher winds. Clearly, closer to the storm, the wind is going to be a lot higher. Don't focus so much on the numbers, but rather just where relative to the rest of the storm, the higher winds will be. This is wind speeds. Okay, so, um, you know, if, you, if you're looking for a value, we're, we're basically talking 30, maybe gusts to 40, maybe an isolated gust of 45, you know, with any of these uh, cells. Again, these, these, these uh, you know, low-topped thunderstorms. Uh, and by the way, these thunderstorms will be rotating, and and that's also a concern of mine. 
Um, here's, here's a weather parameter that we uh, use to demonstrate uh, how much these cells will be rotating. And let me tell you, this is, this is a pretty impressive uh, demonstration of, of rotating storms. So these cells will all be capable of rotating and any one of them could potentially put down a brief tornado, okay? Um, so this is 9 a.m. tomorrow, 10 a.m., 11 a.m., noon tomorrow, 1 p.m., 2 p.m. So I'm gonna stop at 2 p.m. And you'll notice by 2 p.m. it's pretty much over, aside from a few light showers. The weather event for pretty much the worst of it is over. And we'll, we'll just be you know, looking at maybe isolated pockets of rain, uh, maybe some light shower activity. But this band is the main game for us across central North Carolina during the morning hours tomorrow. So that's uh, 2 p.m. tomorrow, 3 p.m., 4 p.m., 5 p.m., 6 p.m., 7 p.m., 8 p.m. Okay, so we're pretty much, let me back up again. So things really start to ramp up right about there, which that is, you know, basically 5, 6 a.m. tomorrow morning. And then the band really gets its act together. That is 9 a.m., 10 a.m., 11 a.m., noon. And as that, as that band sweeps across central North Carolina, again, flash flooding will be a potential, uh, wind gusts of 30 to 40, maybe 45 miles per hour straight line, and even isolated tornadoes within that band. Okay, so... So anyway, I know that's a lot, um, but but suffice it to say, tomorrow morning is when uh, we expect the weather to be at its worst. Again, one more time, that's uh, 6 a.m., 7 a.m., 8 a.m., 9 a.m., 10 a.m. tomorrow, 11 a.m., noon, 1 in the afternoon, 2 in the afternoon, 3 in the afternoon, okay? With things rapidly improving uh, during the afternoon across all of Central North Carolina. Saturday should be pretty nice, um, lots of sunshine, High temperatures in the lower 80s for, for any recovery, any cleanup, um, any uh, storm surveys that we might have to go out and do tomorrow uh, on uh, on Saturday. So uh, so anyway, that's uh, that's that's the way things are shaping up in terms of of timing. Let's go back to the slides and uh, just to kind of get back into the the idea of how much you know how high. Uh, well, these are the slides you've already gotten. I've sent these out already in our email list. So it's the same thing I just showed you here. Uh, so you've already got that. Now, how much additional rain are we expecting again? I, I, I hate to, to really say, well, you know, an inch, and, one inch to an inch and a half, yeah, not a big deal, right? Well, if that one inch, inch and a half falls in 15 minutes, there's going to be flash flooding. So, uh, you know, it, it, clearly, you know, if you have higher amounts, then, then that threat's even greater. So that's how much rainfall. Um, here we have, again, just, just to, to put a quantification to it, uh, we're expecting wind gusts of 30 to 40 miles per hour. And this will be, you know, a, this will be mostly during the morning hours, uh, during the morning hours tomorrow. And then um, I, I want to show a few rivers. Um, the Yadkin um, PD River Basin, uh, we do expect some uh, minor flooding on the Yadkin River. Um, but really, as we go further east, here's the new space and which ironically is already in flood. <laughs> so, um, so, um, but actually it's gonna be dropping, you know? So, you know, assuming it's, you know, an inch, inch and a half of rain, sh you know, it's gonna produce a little bit of bump on, on the height of the, uh, here, like this bump right here, okay? And this one right here is due to the rain that's forthcoming tomorrow, okay? But the overall trend is down. So again, assuming we don't get much more than an inch or two of rain, uh, we should be okay on the Noose River. Um, Cape Fear, same story. As long as, you know, there's that little bump there uh, near Bynum, uh, as long as we, you know, we could stay within, you know, under two inches of rain, it should be okay. Uh, Cape Fear, same story. And the Tar River Basin, again, same story. Close, uh, close to flooding, but uh, certainly uh, could be a lot worse. And, and, you know, especially if, well, you know, I mean, obviously out in the Western part of the state, that's where the, the major river flooding is, is, is expected. All right, here's just another way to convey the tornado threat tomorrow. So uh, the area in yellow will have the greatest risk for tornadoes. Um, so that's basically all of central North Carolina. And again, particularly during the morning hours, basically from sunrise till about noon, that's, that's when the greatest risk is. Um, and then uh, just another way to convey the timing. Um, so again, you know, things kind of going downhill overnight tonight, more towards daybreak. 
in the morning hours on Friday is when things really uh, are, are, are at its worst. Uh, it could be a little breezy tomorrow evening, but dry. And then the river flooding usually takes a little longer, but even that, if there is any, should be very minor. All right, so I feel like there's something else I wanted to show, but it's escaping me at the moment. Um, so, uh, so anyway, this is our summary. Again, flash flooding, down trees, scattered power outages, worst of the weather between sunrise through about two or three. Um, you know, tornadoes, there, there'll probably be several tornadoes. I'd be surprised if there wasn't at least one or two tornado touchdowns somewhere in central North Carolina. Um, river flooding, again, should be mainly confined west of the Yadkin. Um, but again, we'll keep an eye on the rainfall amounts. So uh, I am going to stop the recording there. Um,